This is going to be part four of our series of tutorials for the cloth um, app. And in the previous one, we added or we edited for the cloth in the cloth um, component, these which are called the constraints. And this is, I remember what took me so long to kind of figure out. So sometimes if you get it wrong, let me show you how to play around with it and how to uh, reset it uh, before we move any further. So again, when the cloth is selected and I click this to edit, I should see the black dots. And if I already edited, I should see red dots. And red dots means pinned into place. Let's say that I want to reset it. What do I do? I need to be on select and I do the same thing I did before. I shift and click select the ones that I've already previously edited. And in order to reset them, all I got to do is uncheck that max distance. And next time I click on something else, you'll see that they return to being black. For instance, if I wanted a cloth that was hung from the top, like a drape. So what I would do is select, you know what, let me experiment with it. I can select this uh, piece, and then I can select this one, max distance zero. When I click somewhere else, I'll see that now they're red. And you'll see that when I play, look at what happens to the cloth. If it's hanging from just one pin here and one pin here. Now, it looks like it's not moving that much, but if I go to the cloth now and I start playing around with external acceleration, for instance, X, which is sideways, this is the wind or down. If I play with Y, that's moving it up. And so on. And you can see how it's hanging from two pins here. If I stop, it all goes back. So again, if I wanted to edit it even further, what if I wanted these two to have some flexibility to them? In other words, not pinned, but almost like attached with a rubber band. I would click on it and instead of max distance zero, I would give it a little bit like 0 0.1. You see how it turns green? Same thing here, 0 0.1. One. And I want you to see what would happen. See how it's hanging as if it's attached, not with you know, like hard pins, but with a rubber band. Well, I'm going to go back. Let's say that I messed around with it and I want to go back to the way I was by the end of tutorial three. I will click on it. I will edit. First of all, to reset the ones I already did, I will click and simply uncheck max distance, click and uncheck uncheck max distance, then I can re-select only the left side. Click max distance of zero, they're all red, and now we're back to a flag attached to its left side, waving in the wind. When it decides to do that. Meanwhile, I'm going to look at the word um, tutorial to see what should happen next. And here's my flag. It's about to wave. Uh, that was step number 16, and we can mark it as done. Here it is, back to my flag, waving all around the place. Now, we want to make it look... This is more realistic, right? With like some randomness. We want to make it look like there's sideways winds that uh, kind of make the flag, spread the flag nicely from left to right. So going to the word tutorial, change cloth external and random acceleration to what it says here. Now, basically what I'm changing are these numbers. These numbers right now say zero and I'm putting 733, 733. Let me explain what I'm doing here. So in the cloth, here is the cloth um, component. Right now, all the external acceleration and random acceleration say zero. And I'm putting seven, which means there's a force X seven, which means seven meters per second of sideways wind. I also want to be to have some upwind and front back wind. 
a little bit and I'm also adding a randomness to it which means it can really be from 0 to 7 7, uh, seven range of randomness not constant but it's changing it's like saying like you can be up to 3 you'll be around 3 with a randomness of 3 around it and this is going to give me once it decides to play the reason that my computer is acting slow is because I'm recording this video at the same time. Yours should act a lot better. I just found that, you know, when you record the video, uh, Unity and the video are fighting for the attention of my CPU. Here it is. Now, as we know, while it's playing, yeah, this is a lot more like it. Uh, while it's playing, we can experiment. I can say, oh, you know what? I want the wind sideways to be much stronger. So I can increase it, drag it up, or type a number in it. You see, now I gave it 12, so it looks like it's spreading it more. Or I don't want it to look like it's going up and down as much, so I reduce the Y. Other things I can do, if I want to, is play around to say, well, what happens if this flag was waving around in a zero-G environment? No gravity. In that case, it needs no upwind to keep it up. Totally up to you. These numbers, you just play around them. By the way, if you find a combination of numbers that you like, you go, oh yeah, this looks way better than the one I got. While play, you remember, if you stop playing, it's going to go back to what you got. So if you want to keep those numbers, what you do is you go to the three dots, copy, then stop, and then you get something to paste, paste component values from the time it was playing. Uh, I'm perfectly happy with the way these are right now. Maybe I'll increase the X to like 9, but that's totally up to you. Okay, so we got our cloth waving in the wind. Let's see if we can move on. If flag waves nicely, add as a child of the flag, which means, you know, the parent, not the cloth, a cylinder. Why? Because we need a flagpole. We're going to call it pole and give it the following parameters. Pretty simple. And we will explain why we're doing this. So first of all, I'm going to make sure I can see both. My guide and my, come on, get into the picture. Come on. Mr. Word, here you go. Let's make it look smaller so it's easier for me to scale it down. Maybe just a little bigger than that. Because what I want to see is what numbers I gave to the transform of this pole that I'm creating. So inside the flag, not inside the cloth, inside the flag, going to create a 3D object that's going to be a cylinder because that's basically what a flagpole is and then in its transform we're going to give it the following first of all I'm scaling it down because it's way too big 0 0.2 on its x and 0 0.2 on its z so it's definitely like a thinner pole 0 0.2 and uh, 0 0.02 sorry it's two centimeters it's about one inch an inch is two centimeters, 0.5. Here, everything is in the metric system. So it already looks like a nice pole. Why am I moving it negative uh, 0.75? Negative because it's to the left side. But why 0.75? Negative 0.75. Look at it. It's because the width of the flag is one and a half. And if I left it here, it would be in the center. If I want to move it half its width to the left, Half of one and a half is 0 0.75. Um, also, I want to give it a height of two. So it's pretty tall. But then I need to move it down in its height. So negative one. Half of its height. And now it's firmly in the ground, two meters above the ground, growing out of the ground. And let's see, 75, negative one, zero. Rotation 0, 0 0.02, 0 0.02, and 2 meters above 
the ground. Great. Um, the next step is, of course, to see if it plays nicely. In the next part of the tutorial, what I will do is go to step 19 and uh, see if I can create a nice material for this poll, because right now it's using the default material.